Oh, I'm sorry. I do want to say one more thing real quick. Students, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat function and I will be sure to ask and moderate those questions for us as we go. Um, so please feel free to chat or type in any questions in the chat. Kiki, the floor is yours. Hi, I always love to go first because then I don't feel like I'm, you know, forgetting anything. I just am relaxed afterwards. So hi, welcome everybody. Um, Jeremy, I think I've seen you before in my building. We're about to find out. Um, so my name is Kristen Brown and I'm the founder director of Tribe Seminole Heights. And what we do is we offer 50 activities a week for kids and they all only cost $5. So it is baking, coding, cooking, science, music, art, anything that is of interest to students is something usually that we offer. We're able to do that by uh, being a completely volunteer-led organization. And so we have about 100 volunteers at any time. A lot of them are students. We love working with students because it is such a great opportunity for us to help them explore their interests. So we have some really sweet girls from USF. They're studying biomedical science. They come in and they lead a little scientist class for kids four to six, and they do experiments with them. And it's something that is helping them to sort of like refine their research skills and learn different ways to do presentations for all ages and to refine their own presentation skills with a really friendly audience <laughs> because kids are so like excited to work with you. Um, we also have a lot of student groups that we work with and um, they benefit us in a lot of ways because sometimes we need a really large group. So we have a huge Halloween event coming up and we're working with the marching band from USF and a sorority from USF and they're going to come out and, you know, give out candy and their outfits and costumes and it'll be a way to like build community between our community center and USF. Uh, besides our activities, we also offer free clothing and shoes for kids. And we're able to do that by um, collecting used clothing from families and then laundering it and sorting it by size and sex in our closet and then making that clothing available to families. So we're a place for families in our neighborhood to donate used clothing as well as to receive it. So sometimes students are not... Um, they, they don't have the desire to work with children <laughs> or to be particularly um, people facing. And so they can help out in the closet by folding clothes, organizing clothes, sometimes pulling and delivering clothes. We also, the third part of our mission is we do outreach at two partner schools. And so those are Title I elementary schools, both about uh, both just in our neighborhood, one's a mile and a half away, the other one is right across the crosswalk. And we lead after school activities there for the students, they're free. And so we go in and we do things for the kids. And we also do large events for them, things like field day and graduation. We go in and we sort of like sprinkle the glitter on that situation. So that's another way we like to um, engage with students. Those are really the three core parts of Tribe's mission. Uh, what I think is an interesting part of our story is that we are a totally grassroots community center. We um, have been built on used items, recycled. Everything we have is used. It's been donated. Um, so even though we have a pretty large 25 foot square foot facility, all of the furnishings and everything there has been donated. So there's always an opportunity to come in and help us sort out things we've received and to um, kind of continue to organize. It's also interesting, I think, concept wise that we've received no major funding or grants. Um, we've received one grant, substantial grant from the Tampa Bay Lightning um, as a result of an award that I was given. Um, but other than that, we are made up of all small donations less than $1,000. And I just think it's such a powerful testimony to what people can do when they come together and how students can contribute in a very big way when an organization is very new. So we're only three years old and we were closed for half of last year. So we don't even really count that one. And so we are a great opportunity for students who might be looking to get involved with something that's near the infancy stage still and really get to be an impactful um, volunteering opportunity. So I will wrap it up by sharing my screen. Um, I would encourage anyone who is interested in volunteering at Tribe to start by coming on down. Um, we have a huge Halloween event that's coming up. It's on our website. Here's how you find it. You go to our website, tribeseminoleheights.com, and then you click on Spooky Stroll, and you can 
get involved by volunteering. You can come the day of the event and you can wear a costume and hand out candy. You can come in the few days leading up to it and set up. And if you have a, if you have your phone, you can QR code right here. And if you want to get a couple of friends together and do something where you bring a car and you give out candy from a car, we even have that opportunity. So I would say that our Halloween thing is a great way to come on down. You're only committed for the day. Check it out. See if it's for you. And then you can, um, you know, sort of decide whether you would like to get involved further. We are on Give Pulse, but we struggle to use it. So please go through the community um, uh, office if you are interested and you need more info. Thank you so much, Kiki. That was wonderful. I, I'm sure that was very interesting for all of us. Um, I did not know about your the tribe's mission, so I love that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here today. All right, do we have another volunteer? Yeah, I'll be happy to go next. Thank you, Jeremy. The floor is yours. Yeah. So my name is Jeremy Twalkman, uh, and I'm what's called a district director uh, for the Fort Brook District of the Greater Tampa Bay Area Council of the Boy Scouts of America. That is a mouthful. Um, and to put that much more uh, easily and succinctly, um, uh, I work for the Boy Scouts of America. I'm one of uh, just a, a handful of people in our local area that are called professional scouters. And, and, and what I do is I recruit, promote, support, and fundraise for the Boy Scouts of America in a specific geographic area. Um, our geographic area that, that I'm charged with is the north and west part of uh, Hillsborough County. Um, that's all of uh, the city of Tampa and Temple Terrace up to the Pasco line and then west to the Pinellas line. Other parts of the county, uh, Hillsborough County, and then other, other counties surrounding are all a part of our greater council called the Greater Tampa Bay Area Council um, and other individuals uh, that, that share titles with me um, uh, work in those areas and, and do similar functions. And again, my job uh, is to uh, promote the, the programs of the Boy Scouts of America, get kids, get adults involved in those programs uh, in a variety of ways. We have six programs in the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, most everyone knows of our flagship program, Boy Scouts, um, uh, that recently, uh, just about three years ago, changed its name to Scouts BSA, uh, specifically because we included girls now in that program. Um, and so that program has not changed uh, in its uh, philosophy or in its um, uh, in in the program that we are delivering. The only thing that's changed is now we're allowing girls to be able to to participate and earn the rank of Eagle Scout. That's our flagship program, 100 and now 11 years old. Um, Cub Scouts, the program uh, that kind of feeds right into Scouts BSA, is for kindergarten through fifth graders. Uh, that want to participate in a lot of the similar activities, just more age appropriate at that level. Scouts BSA is for 11 to 17 year olds. Then we have our lesser known programs, uh, Venturing, which is for older uh, youth from 14 to 20 uh, that participate in all sorts of high adventure activities from mountain biking to whitewater rafting and uh, hiking, Appalachian Trail, a whole lot of different things. Sea Scouts, same age groups, 14 to 20. That's specifically related to all things on the ocean or water. Um, uh, so that could be canoeing, it could be sailing, it could be motorboating, it could be a lot of different things. Um, we have exploring, which is a career-based program. Um, that is specific, uh, again, to 14 to 20 year old. Um, and that is geared towards a lot of different careers. Uh, right now, the careers that, that most often will have an exploring post, which is the specific group that um, explorers will meet in uh, is law enforcement. Uh, we have an exploring post with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and with the Tampa Bay Police Department. Um, and so those are the most common. Uh, in the past, we have had a USF Health exploring post. Uh, we had to take a pause on that during COVID, um, but we are hoping to bring that back uh, here hopefully soon um, and uh, looking for up our other opportunities uh, for exploring post as well. And then our last program, which is our, our least known and, and newest of all the programs, is STEM Scouts, uh, specifically geared towards science, technology, engineering, and math, and for third through sixth, uh, third through eighth graders, excuse me, um, and geared towards them doing uh, all uh, 
you know, STEM related activities, but with a scouting bend to it. Um, and so we have that out, outdoor component uh, and, and 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 the like. And so the mission of the Boy Scouts of America kind of encapsulates those things. Um, uh, and, and a lot of people don't really know the mission, but I love sharing it in, in these contexts. The mission of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetime by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and Scout Law. Uh, we do that by taking them camping and taking them hiking and getting them outdoors and in nature and doing a lot of cool, fun activities. But our ultimate goal is to make them better people and better citizens. Um, and so ways that people can get involved, well, there's a lot of ways. One, if you're in college now, you can actually participate in some of the different programs that we have. Uh, as I said, several of our programs go uh, and what we call age out at 21. Uh, and so up until uh, you reach that age out point, you can still participate in some of the different programs, venturing, Sea Scouts and exploring. And so there are opportunities uh, within the community to participate in those programs. Um, after uh, aging out of those programs and being 21 or older, there's many, many opportunities to volunteer. Um, we are a volunteer driven, professionally supported organization. What does that mean? That means there are maybe a dozen to 15 professionals in a nine county area where we have over 1500 volunteers. Uh, and so we really, really rely on those volunteers to drive the train, to lead those, to lead the hikes to lead the events, to lead the campouts and all these things. If it was just the professionals, we would not be having them with any regularity uh, because we just wouldn't have time to do that for the seven, eight, nine thousand scouts um, that we have across a nine county area. So we rely on those volunteers to do a variety of things, to meet weekly with the kids um, in our meetings, uh, to go on campouts with the kids, to lead our merit badges, which are specific um, uh, items that the kid, older kids can learn in every different uh, realm you can imagine from engineering to math to science um, uh, to art, uh, every career that you could think of, we have a merit badge for. So a lot of opportunities for people to get involved. Um, uh, long term, uh, we have different events uh, that you can get involved as well. And the best way to find out about all of those, one is through the calendar that we have, also through ways that you can contact us at Tampa Bay Scouting. Dot org. Again, that's Tampa Bay Scouting dot org. Best way to contact us and find out a lot more information about what we do. Thank you, Jeremy. I am putting Tampa Bay Scouting dot org in the chat, so it is there for us to remember that. Thank you very much. Nora, you are next. Will you please uh, uh, tell us about your organization? Sure. I think that I think you were calling on me. Your um, volume dropped out there for a second, but you were calling on me, right? Uh oh. Now I don't have any volume. Can anybody hear me? I, yes, I think it's starting to come back. Okay, uh -huh. we'll give it a second because I can, I can't hear you. I can see you, but I can't hear you. Yeah, I think Teams just had a little glitch there. There's probably a million people trying to use Teams at one time. Uh, it does. All right. <laughs> Still frozen. <laughs> All right, everybody's. I can see thumbs up, but then they, but then it glitches, and then I can't hear anything. Sorry, I just have mine on mute, but I can hear you great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yay for technology! All right, so if everybody can hear me, I'll go ahead. Um, I'm Nora yes, Payne. Please. I am the producing artistic director for New Tampa Players. New Tampa Players is a community theater, and we've been around for about 20 years. We celebrate our 20th anniversary on March 21st, so that's super exciting. Um, many people think about community theater, and they think, okay, they do shows. But 
NTP is much more than just the shows. Um, our primary mission is to share the performing arts with as many people as possible in Tampa. Um, and we do that through a, var a variety of programs. We have a small black box theater at University Mall called Uptown Stage. We opened it in May and we're starting our first full season there. And we have lots of different types of shows there. So we started with Aquila and the Bee in September, which you know is popular because of the movie from the 90s. We're currently doing Laramie Project 10 years later. And our next show is the Black Nativity. Next in the spring, we're gonna do Puffs. Um, and you know, Puffs is the Hufflepuff perspective on Harry Potter. Although we're not allowed to put that on any poster because anything that is like copyrighted by JK Rowling, we cannot put. So, you know, it's a lot of different types of shows to appeal to a lot of different types of people. Um, there's a lot of shows picked for the college crowd. So make sure you check that out. Um, we're probably most famous in Tampa for Penguin Project. And Penguin Project is a theater program for children and young adults with special needs. And we call we call our children and young adults with special needs young artists. And each young artist is matched with a peer mentor who works with them through the entire process. The whole process is about six months long. And in that process, we rehearse for a junior length musical. It's a fully staged junior length musical that's performed in March at USF Theater One. And this year we're doing Mary Poppins Jr. So we've so far we did Aladdin Jr. in 2019, Peter Pan Jr. in 2020. Of course, we barely we closed the Sunday before everything shut down. So we made it by six days, but we we got that show done and we did not know how lucky we were at the time. Um, and then during COVID, we did a Penguin Project at home over over Zoom and we learned a whole lot of different things about choreography, but we didn't actually do a show because it's very difficult to do a show over Zoom, especially a musical. So we're back with Mary Poppins Jr. We have 47 young artists and we have right now about 35 peer mentors. So we are in urgent need of peer mentors, especially at the college and young adult level, because this year many of our um, young artists are actually over the age of 18. Our youngest young artist is eight, but our oldest young artist is 32, with the majority of them being 18 and older. So if anybody would like to help share the performing arts with another person and walk with them on that journey, we would love to have you. Um, we rehearse a couple of times a week in October, November, and December, and that builds up in January and February to four nights a week, so that by the time we hit Tech Week, which is what theater people call the week before you open a show where you bring in the lights and the sound and the costumes and the sets and everything. Those are four, those are four night a week rehearsals. Um, all of our rehearsals are relatively short because our young artists do have short attention spans. So the, the shortest rehearsal is about an hour and the longest is only about two and a half hours. And that includes getting them in costume, doing the show and getting them out of costume. So it's a pretty fast process all around. Um, so that's Penguin Project, and it really is a project of, you know, from the heart. Um, the, you know, our young artists have a ball, and for many of them, it is fulfilling a dream come true to be the stars of a show. Um, many of them have had the opportunity to be in the ensemble, but they have not been, the, they have not had the opportunity due to their disabilities of being the star of the show. And they can do it, they just need support to make it happen. Um, so that's our, probably our most famous thing. Um, we also do a program called Saturday Morning Arts, and that's for the students over at Muller Elementary. We are right next to Muller Elementary at the University Mall. And their third through fifth graders come on Saturday mornings from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And we partner with different nonprofit arts organizations to give them a little taste of all the different types of performing and visual arts. Um, last week, we had a painter in, his name was Sean Rainey, and he taught them how, how, to, paint a, how to paint a pumpkin because, you know, it's fall time, even though, you know, some of our temperatures are not saying that. And then this coming week, we're partnering with Tampa City Ballet, and we're going to learn a little bit about the Nutcracker. Um, and then another program we do is, is brand new. It's called the Diverse Abilities Arts Festival, and it was kind of born out of Penguin Project. While we had Penguin Project on Zoom, we were talking about different things, like they learned how to do their own original choreography. They wrote a play. 
They um, did their own visual art. They did their own spoken word poetry. And we had this great big room of like, uh, you know, Zoom room of like 80 penguins and they're all talking, um, which is hard to manage. But <laughs> suddenly I hear Miss Nora, Miss Nora. And I'm trying, I'm looking through the screens and, you know, I'm getting these waves of, you know, and I said, what? I said, and I finally said, I said, what? I think I see you. What, what did you have a question for? And he was like, I have a question. Are there people like us that do these things? And I said, yes, of course there are there. And he's like, oh, I've never met another person with a disability other than here in Penguin Project that does different types of art activities. I said, there are plenty in our area. And he's like, I would like to meet them. I said, OK, we will make that happen. And that's where the Diverse Abilities Arts Festival came from. And it's bringing together artists with disabilities young and old to celebrate the art that we do. So we have partnered with, again, a lot of different arts organizations because I know very little about visual art. Um, <laughs> so we've partnered with a lot of different arts organizations to make that happen. And that will be in February of 2022. So that's a little bit about what NTP does. And it is much more than we just do shows. Um, and you know, community theater, I always say, has taught me so much. Um, I majored in psychology and minored in family studies when I was in college, and I have a master's degree in Montessori education, and I taught at a Montessori school, you know, three years old through six years old for many years. Um, and it's really through community theater that I have gained a lot of the skills that I have gained. Um, my mom was an English teacher and she always told me in high school, she's like, you're going to need to know how to do public speaking and you're going to need to know how to write. And she really wanted me to take a speech class. And I really resisted that because I am by nature an introvert and I do not like public speaking. So I push back against that. And she laughs now because mostly what I do is I write and I do public speaking. Um, so she she gets a good giggle out of that. But it really is true. Um, and community theater can teach and use all types of different skills to work together. It doesn't have to just be the actors or just be the singers, um, which is what the image that most people get. It's for the actors. Um, I am not an actor. I came into it through stage managing, and I love to stage manage. I love creating order out of chaos, which makes me a great producing artistic director. <laughs> um, but other things that other skills that are used, public speaking, marketing, because you can do all that you, you know, you can do everything wonderfully. But if nobody knows that you're doing it, it doesn't really help. Um, construction, set construction. Um, all of that is using, you know, basic woodworking techniques and everything like that. You know, my son has learned a lot about about construction through constructing sets, um, how to work together on a team when a lot of people have a lot of different opinions and they all want to go a little bit differently about doing things. Um, people management, organizing, performing arts, creative writing, all of those things go together into a community theater. So um, that's a basic outline of what New Tampa Players does. We, of course, we need peer mentors. So if anybody is interested in working on the Penguin Project, please contact me. Um, we always need help in production. So if you want to learn about lighting design, you want to learn about how to run a sound system, you want to learn about how to construct a set, um, you want to learn how to sew. Our costumer is amazing. She's another one because she is an electrical engineer and she uses all of her engineering skills to construct our costumes. Um, and it's really fascinating to learn her perspective on how to construct costumes because it's completely different than somebody who came to it through sewing. Um, so all of those types of things, if you would like to learn how to do those, already know how to do those, want to get involved, you can always reach out to us at newtampaplayers.org. And my email address is Nora, N-O-R-A dot Payne, P-A-I-N-E at newtampaplayers.org. Make sure that my last name has an I in it, like pain in the neck with an E on the end. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nora. Will you mind putting your email address in the chat for us? Absolutely. I can do that right now. Thank you. Well, so, you know, I, this is a major expo today. And so students are wanting to learn, you know, how majors can help them in career paths. So I would like to uh, pose questions to the panel. The first question I have is, 
How has your undergraduate degree contributed to the work you do for your current organization? I think you already hit on this. Yeah, I see, Nora, you did a great job of that already. So that, yes, and that's why did. it led me to that question. So uh, Kiki, please, thank you. I loved it when Nora said she had a degree in psychology as well, because that is, I'm a USF um, alum and that is my degree also. And I, people always say, oh, that, okay, how do you do that every day, all the time? You use psychology for everything, a basic understanding of how human motivation works, how to connect with people and how we are all different is always valuable. And it's been valuable pretty much in everything I've done. I, um, I, I did get the questions, right? So I had some time to think about this. And, you know, I would encourage students who are not sure where they want to be on their major to try to look towards things that come easily for them. Because I think a lot of times there is this sort of natural suggestion to go out and find something that you're really passionate about. And I'm not sure that I had that in my 20s, to be frank. I don't think I found it until my 40s. But everything that I did prior to this led me to founding this organization. And so I think that when you're thinking about what do you want your major to be, look towards something that comes easily to you so that you can have a nice college experience, so that you can get good grades and you can find ways to explore those passion through work, study, through volunteering, through a part-time job. I don't know that you learn everything about what you actually like doing in the classroom. I think sometimes you learn how to execute that. And then, you know, you get out of school and you're like, whoa, is this really like it every day? And so I've loved the transition towards more hands-on learning and everybody's doing practicums, but service learning in particular, if you're interested in working with kids, you go and you work with one of these three organizations, right? If you're interested in working with adults with special needs, you go and you work within a, a population like that, right? I think that that's really the key thing. And when you're searching out for um, outside experiences, all of these are really powerful and have impacted me. So I, my, I, I have come from a family of four brothers. We're a scouting family. I was a Cub Scout leader in high school. I was part of that Explorers program that he's talking about. My dad was a Scoutmaster, and two of my brothers became Eagle Scouts. So that experience really helped me to cultivate a love for the outdoors. It helped me to understand that that's really key to what I need to thrive. And so I, I endorse that opportunity, right? What Nora is saying about being able to speak in public and the, the soft skills that she's using in her job description, those are things like sales, communication, marketing, really fundraising is sales at the end of the day. All of us who raise money, fundraising is sales. So if you have it in your kind of mind that you want to do anything that's going to be in service of children or in facing customers, facing the public, volunteering in service is a great way to start it. Sorry, I think I went long on that. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you, Kiki. And I, I would like to say that, um, and to follow up with that, you know, in the social sciences and humanities, there is not as intense a push for professional shadowing and volunteering as there is in the natural sciences. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, for any student that, that watches this or that is joining us today, it is really important for you to do your volunteering, to do professional shadowing, to do informational interviews, to reach out to people that you see doing jobs that you think are interesting and ask questions Absolutely. and get involved. If all you do is go to class, you will not know where you want to work at the end of your college experience. So with that, Jeremy, take it away. How does your undergraduate degree help you in your current organization? Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, for me, it, it's interesting. I, I wish I had gone um, uh, actually majored in something like psychology. And I my my advice would be to listen to the guidance counselors when they're when they are giving you guidance, because I did not. Um, I, I, uh, I my degrees in criminology and criminal justice. Thank goodness that has not had to come up with my job with the Boy Scouts of America. I'm glad that some of the things I learned in criminology have not uh, not so much had to, had to come up. I was on a uh, 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 blinders path to being a police officer and it wasn't until I, I uh, started to do some hands-on work with them, uh, specifically in the police um, academy, 
that I realized that it was not the career for me and, and went a different direction and ended up getting into the nonprofit world and, and finding my way to the Boy Scouts. Um, I was a Boy Scout as a kid, so those experiences are really what kind of led me to that. Um, and so my specific degree of criminology and criminal justice, the, the content of that degree, not so much has been applicable in my job. What has been very applicable um, is, uh, again, a lot of the soft skills of, of being able to speak in front of people, um, being able to confidently talk and write, uh, uh, not just coherently, but with confidence. Um, uh, those things have been invaluable to me. And, and one thing, especially working in nonprofit, I've worked in several prior to uh, coming to work for the Boy Scouts. One thing that I think college does a great job of preparing you for is that uh, you have to juggle many things in the nonprofit world. You have to wear many, many hats. Uh, uh, and, and I know one of the questions, and we may get to it, was what do you do in a particular day? Well, it's really hard to define that. Um, especially in the nonprofit realm, um, because from one day to the next, I could be doing vastly different things and having to t wear uh, vastly different hats and take on vastly different roles. And so in college, being able to, to go from a volunteer role to a class, to a very different class, uh, to something completely uh, different, uh, to a job that I may be holding down, uh, you know, being able to take off one hat and put on the other, um, that is invaluable. Uh, and the more diversity you can have in those experiences, like Kiki said, one can can help you uh, see some of the different things you want to do, but um, also can just help you, you know, be able to jump from one thing to the next. And especially in the realm of nonprofit, but also in many other uh, positions as well, that skill is is underrated, but but needed. Uh, and we talk about that anytime we're hiring people for jobs within our office is that you just have to be able to go from one activity to the next and they can be completely different one to the other. Speaking to a room of kindergartners and then going right around and and uh, asking somebody for a $10,000 donation. I mean, that can be kind of the switch that we make <laughs> um, in our office and, and, and to have the mindset of being able to go from one thing to the next. Uh, it's very, very beneficial. Uh, on the major side, you know, my advice would be if you're unsure, don't don't pigeonhole yourself too uh, into something too specific um, uh, because that may not be as applicable for you. Whereas if you uh, something like psychology is fantastic because it has much a broader scope and can help you in a much broader way than something for me more specifically is criminology and criminal justice. Obviously, if that is your passion and that's what you want to do, then absolutely. Um, and it took me uh, doing some more hands on things to, to fully realize that that wasn't wasn't what I wanted to do. So, you know, going and volunteering and doing some of those internships early on and then figuring out, wow, this may or may not be for me and then being able to find those things that are. So. Thank you, Jeremy. That was I, what I heard from everyone here is that your degree gave you the skills needed to be, a, a, you know, an excellent employee or an, uh, you know, an organization person or a leader in your organization. And I think that that's important for students to really contextualize is that the skills we get by completing a bachelor's degree 100%. are what lends us to be a great employee. Where we want to work is based on our experiences. So that's really important. And I think everyone kind of said that in their own way here, which was really helpful, I think, for students to understand that you know, you can choose a major that you're really interested in because you like it. And then the skills you get from doing that will make you be an excellent employee. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So, um, you know, let's see. So we kind of hit some of these. Uh, we, people have been given some advice and things like that. Um, I know everyone has talked about how undergraduate students could get involved in your organizations today, which has been great because we all know that students need these experiences to mm -hmm. formulate their pathways. So um, maybe we could talk maybe a little bit different. So there is, I like this question. What is your company culture like? <laughs> I think that's important, right? Students want to know what I got their that. environment okay. is, right? So yeah, Kiki. You're, okay, you're, so you're this on. is what we say. We, I, you know, I don't know if this is appropriate for the whole U.S. audience, but this is what we say at Tribe. We say we love weirdos because we 
we're everybody at Tribe. I don't know of an organization that has more diversity only because we are over a hundred volunteers, right? So our diversity is not just, you know, gender and sexual orientation and race and ethnicity. It's neurotypical. It's a lot of us have like sensory stuff going on. It's creative types. And, you know, we want, we're just painting everything or we're singing and playing instruments and everybody has such a like funky, crazy sense of style that together we are just this completely eclectic, eclectic mix of people's soup that makes no sense, except that our passion is we are, we say do good or weirdos. Like we're all just trying to do right. And we, we all, you know, we don't really, if, if someone, if there's a student who's like really has like a lot of hate for any particular group, they're not going to be comfortable at Tribe, right? Like we are everybody. We really are. We're everybody, our kids. We have a lot of kids with special needs. We have families from all backgrounds, all economic backgrounds, and you know, we're at the school, so we have everybody. And I love the way when people kind of will um, interview with me for volunteering, they're like, oh, do I have to cover my tattoos? Or what about my nose or my, um, we're like, whatever, we don't care, you know, cover all the <laughs> hot spots, you know? But we really don't, that's not what it's about for us. It's about presence and people who have this desire to come in and serve. And so we love weirdos. Awesome. Thank you. I do want to just remind students uh, that you are welcome to throw a question in the chat. Uh, so please feel free to do so if anything pops in your head as we're having this discussion. Um, Nora or Jeremy, would you like to talk about the culture where you work? I can. Um, so New Tampa Players being a community theater, um, it's mostly about community. It's about everybody bringing their various skills together or not skills. Um, <laughs> you know, there's people that walk in and they've never been in a show and that's perfectly okay. They have no experience. Some have not even seen a show. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we, we start from the ground up, so to speak, but it's about creating a community and creating a story. Um, you know, theater at its essence is about telling a story. You can, you can, you know, you can have one actor standing in the middle of a room with no lights and no particular costume and you still have theater. Um, you know, in our modern way, we think of like Broadway with all of its lights and its costumes and its tracks and it's, you know, all of the technology stuff that goes into a Broadway show. And I love Broadway shows. Don't get me wrong. They're, they are amazing. But at the essence of theater, there is a story and we all have a story. Everybody that comes into New Tampa Players, everybody that you ever meet has a story and it's a matter of sharing those stories. And sometimes you share part of your story through a play or through a musical. And it might only be the tiniest little portion of your story, but if you're acting in a story, if you're, if you are, you know, you're backstage stage managing, you're sharing part of yourself with the audience and you're sharing part of yourself with the community. So I guess at the at the heart of NTP, there is a story to tell. And I would say that basically pushes our culture. Wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you. Jeremy, you're, you're up. Yeah. Uh, so for us, uh, kind of two main things as far as the culture of, uh, of our office um, is uh, we like to say we are one team the Greater Tampa Bay Area Council. And so what that means for us is there's a lot of things that we're doing individually on our own. As I said, uh, we have different geographic areas where the different professionals will work, but ultimately uh, we want to see the whole uh, organization succeed. And so if that means that I drive up to Hernando County and support my colleague uh, in an event that she has, then I do that. Or she may come down to Hillsborough County and those aren't our areas. I'm not in charge of Hernando County, but um, her success is my success. Um, uh, and so we are one team and we support each other in that way. Uh, the other thing that I say, especially to people that are coming into our office brand new, is that they need to buy in to what we are doing as an organization. They need to buy in. We don't say people have to have a background in scouting. That is not a requirement to work for the Boy Scouts of America. 
or even necessarily to volunteer with the Boy Scouts of America. A lot of people think that you do. Now, I happen to be a, a, a former scout and an Eagle Scout, and so I do have a lot of that experience, but that is not a requirement. What is required is that people buy in to our organization, buy into our mission. People come in thinking that this is a nine to five job that you, ch you know, clock in, clock out, and you're done, and you kind of forget about it later. That is not what our organization needs. Um, or how we are successful. We're successful when people come in, they buy into the mission, they buy into the organization, they buy into seeing kids thrive as uh, scouts to learning things, to ultimately uh, seeing these kids grow and change the world. I mean, that's our ultimate goal. And so if you can buy into that mission uh, and buy into that mindset, uh, then you can be successful in our office, you know, and simple things, you know, I'm wearing the scout uniform and we've seen employees come and go where they just, they couldn't wear the uniform. And it's like, that's a part of it. That's a, for us. That's a part of being able to buy in because our volunteers take this super, super seriously. And whether you're into all the patches or not, every, some people are, some people aren't, but you, you buy into what our volunteers are passionate about. Um, and so, uh, you know, buying into the organization and recognizing we are one team, that are those are two main things uh, that are a part of our office culture and, and help us to be successful. Fantastic. I would say, um, you know, Boy Scout tattoos, Scout tat or Scout, uh, Scout uh, merit badges are like tattoos now, right? We, we wear it, we wear them with pride. Um, well, folks, uh, we have about 10 minutes left to go here. Um, I was wondering if you just had any final thoughts on or some, you know, we could I could either do a question or we could go with the final thought from each of you. Wh which would you prefer that we go with? Oh, friend, lead the way. OK, <laughs> so then I'm going to go with this one. We kind of talked a little bit about this. But again, we're trying to, uh, you know, we're, we all have our degrees. We all have our jobs. We're trying to help students understand how their major can help them get a job, right? So what is one thing students could start working on now to be a competitive for a position similar to yours? Please go. Their attitude. Their attitude. Honestly, I work with a lot of students and I am not going to be negative, but I want to say their attitude. I would suggest all students get a part time job. Go out and see what it's like to work because it's different than when you're home with your family or it's just a different culture and environment when someone is paying you to do a job. And so the most valuable thing I think students can do is go get a job and learn what it means to be on time and what the consequences of not being on time are or of missing work or of talking to someone inappropriately or wearing the wrong thing. Like get all the rookie mistakes out of your way by working at the Chick-fil-A or or the target or something you can walk to because there's a lot of them and when i take students who are are nearing the end of their degree and we we give them opportunities my manager of family programs um she came in as a volunteer we had a full-time job we hired her out of it right so there are employment opportunities for for students but when we get kids who are like at the even at the end of school or fresh out of school they do not know some of the basic etiquette of work, what it is like to be a member of the workforce, and it's key. And one of the key things that I would say is some of the things that you learn are just not true. There are stupid questions. It does hurt to ask. And you need to really be mindful of what it means to be an employee. So go get a job because it will teach you all of those things so that you don't mess it up when you have an opportunity. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think that's great advice. Laura or Jeremy, can you talk about maybe what ways that students, what students could do now to, you know, get themselves in line for a career that's similar to yours? I think my biggest piece of advice would be talk as much in public as you possibly can. Um, you know, I shied away from all of that when I was in college because, yeah, I still shy away from it. But Still, I have to, you know, I'm like, okay, I you know, and it was especially during COVID, I didn't speak in public because there wasn't really public to speak in. So I noticed a big difference after we came back and I had to start speaking in public. I had gone, I had regressed a lot <laughs> um, and my nerves had come back and I'd, you know, and I had the same, I had the like, you know, I was twisting my hands, which you can see, this is what I do when I'm nervous, but you can't do that if you're not on, on Zoom, you have to stand up and put your hands like down <laughs> and not 
fidget. Um, so I noticed a lot of regression. So one thing that I wish I had done in college is I wish that I had pushed myself to do things that I was uncomfortable doing. And that may mean, for me, that means public speaking. For other people, that may mean other things. But um, I wish I'd pushed myself. Thank you. Yeah, for for me, it's um, uh, it's diversifying your experience in college. Um, don't uh, and you said it before. Don't just go take your classes, go home, and and that's it. And you come out with whatever degree that is, but that's the only thing you've come out with. Diversify your experiences. Take it oppor- Take advantage of the variety of opportunities both the university provides but also the community at large provide. You know, there's volunteer opportunities at Tribe, at New Tampa Players with the Boy Scouts of America, and many, many other wonderful places in the Tampa region that you can volunteer for. Get a job, as Kiki said, you know, get, you know, a couple jobs if you have the time for it. Um, You know, take take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, At the university, oh my gosh, there are so many opportunities. I went to Florida State University. I was a part of the marching band. I was a part of, (laughs) I was a part of, of a fraternity there um and you know and so diversifying the number of opportunities that that you're participating because you never know when those experiences and the skills that you learn are going to come back to really really help you uh in the future and and for me in this uh the fraternity i i was a part of one of those experiences was forcing i had to go up to all of the existing brothers and ask them for an interview and i was super shy to do that i did not want to go up to a complete stranger and say hey can you come and sit with me for an hour so i could talk to you and ask you questions did not want to do that and boy did that help me tremendously in breaking out of a shell and being able to go up and talk to people that I don't know, strike up a conversation, be able to talk to them uh, in a comfortable manner. Uh, And at the time, did I think that was going to be beneficial for me in the future? I had no idea. Um, But it turns out it really was. And and I certainly didn't go into it with that mindset. But when you diversify, diversify your experiences, both in work, in school, in extracurriculars, uh, so many of those skills are going to come back um, and, and be uh, super helpful for you in the future, whether that's in your personal life or certainly in the workforce. Could not agree more. That was fabulous. Thank you so much. Well, folks, we are at 1147 here. I know we're supposed to go to 1150. Um, students, this would be an opportunity. I know there's three of us in here. Does anybody have any questions for our panelists today? One last try, right? right? Well, thank you so. Oh, yes, Den, please give us your question. I don't know. You know, actually, I think Den, you might be muted through this thing. You might have to type your question into the chat. I think. Can you oh, no. give me up to there? it? I can try. Can you no, you're me? good. Actually, I can hear you. We all can hear you. Yes. Awesome. Um, so I only learned about Tribe um through the website, but I would love to ask like all three of you about. Um, like virtual volunteer opportunities, if that's available. Um, well, currently I have uh, some kind of like experience in volunteering. I have um, my own project in my home country, Vietnam, about uh, mental well-being, and it's been running for one year. I'm also tutoring at Moore Elementary with um, the Hope Project, Help Me Grow Reading. And I would love to have some other volunteer opportunities so I can double in. Great. Excellent question, Den. Thank you. Great, great, great. There's such a need for tutors. Mort Elementary is so lucky to have you because their their population is underserved as well. I'm familiar um, with the school and I used to work over at Mort Park. So that is such excellent work you're doing for those students. Thank you so much. Do you guys have any advice for maybe uh, any that you know of for any sort of online volunteering opportunities? And that might be a challenge right now because of, but I know that with with the challenges of COVID, online volunteering and online internships have started to become more accessible. I think you stumped us. Let and, you know uh, what? No, I'm just trying to think of it. Let, email me let me think about that because i do know that there is virtual tutoring up there are more virtual tutoring opportunities um and i was thinking about your project it kind of 
check out um, Kindness, um, Project Kindness. They're based out of Denver. And there is a local woman who has started a Tampa branch. And what she is doing is she is, um, it's, it's, a, it's the same idea. It's um, volunteering as a means of fighting um, mental illness of depression, right? And so it is trying to encourage people to um, seek well-being through service. And so maybe she has some virtual help or that project might be one that ties in with the work you were doing in Vietnam um, because maybe there's like a, a way to tie those together. And I have a friend who's volunteering with Gigi's Playhouse, which is an organization that works with ch children and young adults with Down syndrome. Um, and they do, they do volunteer online tutoring, um, they do, right. reading tutoring specifically. Um, yep. And she, and she does two, like two tutoring sessions that are about 45 minutes a piece, you know, for one, one particular child. Um, so I would check out Gigi's Playhouse. I was trying to remember which organization it was, and it finally got to my brain. <laughs> you know what, too? If you want to just work with a child one-on-one, -on -one, email me. I have a family maybe you could help. That would be great. I'll reach out to you later. Thank you so much. Of course. Alyssa, did you have a question for us? Uh, I just wanted to say I'm also kind of interested in maybe volunteering at Tribe. I, <laughs> I'm really undecided right now. I'm a freshman. I don't really know what I want to do, but I am interested in art and like as a career, potentially becoming an art teacher. I'm, it's really just like up in the air, but I mean, I would be interested in volunteering at Tribe. Too. You should try teaching in art class and just see if you like it. That's the great thing about volunteering is we're not paying you. And so you can wait, you know, we're just like, okay, you could try it, right? So <laughs> we have tons of art classes and you can just volunteer to teach in art class. You know, I would, um, Nora mentioned Sean Rainey and he's a local artist. He's so talented. I put his website in the chat just because I'm a, a huge fan of his. He volunteers at Tribe. He also works for us for our after school program. And I think just the ability to be around other working artists is really what helps you figure out if you might like to do that as a career. If you Google Kobe Court Tampa, you will see that our organization commissioned the largest mural of Kobe Bryant in the world. It's an 8,000 square foot mural on our partner school's basketball court. And you can see like photography of it. And it was a 24 year old artist who did that project. And he, you know, got inspired by coming into tribe and being around other artists. And he started taking risks. And now he's like a full-time working artist. So, um, and he's self-taught. So there's just so many opportunities to like connect with a mentor type person that if you think you may want to get involved in art or in theater or in if you wanted to get in police, right, you go in and just doing it with one of those organizations is the way. So if you think you might want to be an art teacher, you're one of us. Come on down. <laughs> OK, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to add is it's OK not to know what you want to do as a freshman. Uh -huh. It really is. It really, really is. Yes. But you should, if you feel in any way tied to art, you should just keep making it. Just mm -hmm. keep making it is what you should be doing. If you feel a tie to art or music or one of those things while you're in school, you should use that opportunity to keep making art or keep making music or keep moving your body or doing whatever your thing is that you feel really led to because that'll probably get you wherever else you're gonna be, right? Like even if you don't end up as an artist or an art teacher, you're gonna end up in something visual, I bet. You know, right. so just keep making it. Thank you. You have to take advantage of opportunities and then push on those doors of opportunity to see what's on the other side. Um, that's uh, another crucial part of the college experience for sure. Well, is there any other questions from our students today? Well, I thank everyone so much for joining us today. I think this was a great discussion. I'm really glad that this was recorded for posterity and for other students uh, to be able to observe later. Um, does anyone have any any final remarks that you would like to say? Um, I, I know that was not one of our questions, so I just kind of throw that out there. I know I used to do a lot of interviewing, and that's one of the things you always ask at the end, was is there anything that was left unsaid? Going once. No, I just want to talk to those two girls. So you both better email me because I got I got for you both. <laughs> awesome. All righty. Well, three times it is. I appreciate everyone's participation. 
Thank you so much to everyone. And it was great to meet you all. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye, thank you.